Okay, so got the uh, the meeting notes up. Can some can someone uh, share a screen with the uh, meeting notes? Hey, hey, Ed, are you able to uh, to share a screen with uh, meeting notes on? Uh, one second. Yeah, sure. let me Thanks. Go get to the meeting notes on my. They are here somewhere. There we go. They're even here recently because I added myself to the list. So let me go ahead and share that. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. So first, is there anyone who needs to be added to the list who is uh, not able to add themselves? We can add you uh, manually or have someone else add you. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, Al Morton can't reach Google today. I am having some difficulties uh, sharing the meeting notes because of I'm not sure what yet. Um, could someone else? I'll try, Ed. Many thanks, Tom. Uh, okay. What the heck? Of desktop one, I guess if I just share my whole desktop. Okay, share screen, and you'll see all my ugly secrets, and then go. Can can you see me? Okay, or can you see my desktop? Yes. And the yeah. meeting note should be right in front of. Oh, fantastic. Okay, and then I'm looking at the agenda. Oh, oops, that's May 25th. How did I get down there? I don't know how it scrolled down. All right, okay. so. Where the heck are we? Oh, here we are. Okay, I got it. July 9th, 8th, the agenda should be right in front of you, Fred, so read away. Fantastic, thank you very much. So the first, uh, first question is um, agenda bashing. So I added some stuff to the agenda. Um, if you'd like to have a conversation about something, then Please uh, speak up. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, move on. So first uh, option was um, to review was uh, Docker Hub images. Um, I, as of last night, I don't think Ed, uh, has anything on the Docker Hub. Uh, is, is this still correct? Uh, that's correct. Um, do we have something where we're ready to push? I, I'm happy to go sort that out. Um, if not, you know, again, I, I'm happy to go make that happen. Apologies. It's been a little bit of a weird week for me. Um, and, no, no, and... no apologies. Um, it's, it's probably... Um, well, what do you think, Sergey? Do you, do you think that uh, we're at a point now where it would make sense to do testing to start pushing um, some of the images up, or uh, do you think we should wait? No, I mean we could. If some, if folks wants to play with it with what we have already, I mean <clears throat> it would be great uh, to have an extra feedback or you know reports on some issues. Uh, if they don't want to build images by themselves then having them at the docker would be great. It's not mandatory, but it would be nice. Yeah, I, I think it'd be a good idea just to, to start building out some of that, uh, even though the functionality is not really there to, uh, to run workloads yet, I think it'd be good to start getting this in, so that way that it's been testing and baking for a while. We can, uh, uh, especially, especially with uh, the potential coming of, uh, of better continuous integration testing that'll that's coming up. Uh, I think it'll help uh, tremendously when we when we get to that point. Um, let's see. We have a make file that has been created. Uh, there's um, there's a couple uh, bugs that I found in the make file that I'm going to fix today, but uh, Basically, you should be able to type make and um, and have it work. Uh, 
I don't know if this works in the OS X or Windows environments. Uh, it definitely works in the Linux environment. So if anyone wants to test on either Windows or uh, or OS X and make contributions, uh, they, that would be very welcome. Um, so uh, mascots, did anyone come up with any ideas for uh, for our mascot? Okay, so I had a uh, I had a talk with um, actually I was taking a look uh, at at a potential option and I, I tell me what do you guys think of this so uh, I was I was thinking of perhaps some form of a um, of a tunnel spider as a as a mascot you know it's constantly weaving the web and constantly building uh, tunnels and and connecting things together. Uh, we can find a way to make it really cute. Uh, is, does that sound like a good idea or? or is... Well, Fred, is every, as everybody in their youth or some people read Charlotte's Web, instead of saying some yeah. pig, maybe the web could say some <laughs> network. <laughs> <laughs> That might be cute. I, I think it's also good to, to get something cute that we could maybe do a stuffed version of at some point. Um, I know from experience with other communities that when you get to the point where you, you are sort of making swag, uh, stuffed mascots make amazing swag. Yeah, and one of the things that I particularly uh, like about it uh, is like, like in the Linux, uh, and and go mascots that they're they're alive they can do things and you know they can they can fish or they can play golf or whatever <laughs> uh, and so so i think something something that's quite live you know it's is is definitely a, definitely a positive so uh, does it have to be sorry does it have to be an animal it doesn't have to be an animal because I mean, as an alternative, uh, you know, like in the old days, uh, uh, the telephone system was basically human driven. So th there was a nice girl switching the connections. So if you could get um, some sort of a, like a, a drawing on that, switching the connection, that could be also a possibility. Yeah, I definitely. If you want to keep it in 90s space, you could go like Splinter from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles kind of tunnels. <laughs> hmm. So constantly uh, traversing, uh, traversing the tunnels and, um, and making them a safer place. Yeah, because as we know, the internet is a series of tubes, so. <laughs> well, well, I will let, um, I will let Ed think of these things and see what he, uh, see what he wants to do with it. Cool. Okay. So um, we we can revisit this topic as well. There's a lot of important stuff we want to get to. Uh, so Tom, um, any any luck with uh, with some of the documentation? Yeah, I, I I I'm not. I'm trying to do end to end here, and um, I I I I didn't. I was hoping to get the uh, um, you know pull request ready by last night, but it's going to take another day or two. I. I was trying initially to work with a CentOS distro, of course, as you might guess, but I ran into some issues with uh, just trying to lay up the packages in such a way, basic stuff, so Google protocols, buffers okay. would work with, with the Go versions that I could do and the mixture of upstream and packages. And I went back to Fedora 28, um, which is, you know, as documented here, is much better and that's much quicker moving along. So when I get things updated for Google 28 and everything built and running, I will uh, document the process. It shouldn't be m very long now. Sorry for the delay. Oh, no worries. You know, we're happy to get any, any work, any help there from is, anyone. So, so the, the one issue I have I wanted to bring up that's, that is hard to deal with 
is uh, there's a lot of run, a lot of .md files that sort of tell you bits of how to, how to do things. And I decided to write one from scratch. So I don't know whether I should, uh, so I'm just do a, a pull request with just this file. And then we, that, hopefully that'll start the discussion of whether we want to consolidate this, uh, the, the startup and build documentation or not, startup, build and run. So it's just, uh, it, we could wait to the pull request to start that discussion. It might be better because it looks like we have a lot of things on the agenda today. Yeah, so uh, I guess just a teaser, uh, we're, we moved the wiki to the, um, to, uh, to the main repo uh, and. Okay, the, so, yeah, you know, that's right. So it should go in there. Yeah, and the, and the plan, uh, the plan is to, um, at this point is, is to eventually generate um, Hugo based uh, website and, and that'll give it much better layout, much better table of contents and, and uh, yeah, and I, I, so. right. So if I, if, but it seems to me that if this is an MD file, which it is, then it should be a step toward that. Um, Absolutely. Say. So Hugo takes Markdown and it generates HTML for those yeah. that are not familiar with it. But the so. general idea of having three or four uh, .md files that we have to, if we're going to have multiple ones, then we just have to organize them in a hierarchy so they will agree with each other and make sense and look like, oh, you know. So it, it's just a discussion we have to go given this. I will, I see the note here, uh, but um, let, uh, let me, I uh, don't know why I didn't look at this yet because this must have just pulled up in a recent poll request, so, or in a recent poll. So let me look at it and see how my stuff fits in. Since I haven't checked anything in yet or it's set a pull request, I should be fine. I'll make sure it, go, it fits into what we got here and then we can discuss what to go further, what to do further. Okay, I'm done. Okay, so. Uh, Taylor, um, were you able to add any documentation for the CNCF? I think it was a CNF I, project. Yeah. So after talking with Ed and I had, had started some initial work on this and I think I was going at a, diff a different approach. So I was looking at kind of a general overview okay. versus focused on um, working with the NSM project. So I'm redoing the write-up um, to be focused on what do we need in this project from NSM. So where is that integration point? And talking with them, it may be better to open like an issue or a pull request or something similar to in the Kubernetes side where you have the Kubernetes enhancement proposals, the caps, or something like that. So have a, essentially a write-up, which could be an issue or whatever, and say, here's the project, the CNF project, and how we're deploying these containers in Kubernetes and where they fail to, um, we, where we can't use the Kubernetes ways or, or build them containerized without stepping outside of what Kubernetes offers, which is the networking side is, is what we're needing. So focus more on that and highlighting. So give an overview, which I had already been working on, but I want to highlight those parts where we were actually blocked. And there are specific areas where we're just fully blocked. So I'm pivoting to do that. So I, I think my question for y'all would be, do you have thoughts on where something like that um, should go? A, a issue or it could still be a, a doc um, like we were talking about or the wiki either way. Uh, but it's more of a request for comments on what we're doing and then helping to drive um, any features that y'all might be doing um, to get feedback and help y'all in that direction. So, um, 
Ed, do you have anything to add towards that since you had a conversation on this? Yeah, so I, I think probably doing is an issue is a good idea because I, I um, you know, obviously uh, being able to, to meet those needs is, is certainly among our uh, objectives. And, and I, I think being able to get something you can use sooner rather than later, um, at least for me personally, is something of a priority. Um, and so, you know, getting an issue where we can sort of dump them out and then maybe from there we can break them down into smaller, more actionable issues, um, strikes me as an excellent idea. <laughs> I see you're all over it. I'm glad you said that. I, I have this vision of you sitting there with the, the submit button, you know, cursor. Yes. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, my guess is it'll probably get broken up into smaller issues as we go, but, but just getting the information out there makes it tractable. Absolutely. We may in, end up just closing this out. It may be more of a conversation issue to build out what, <clears throat> how do we want this to look or, and this could lead to enhancement proposal type thing for y'all or whatever. So great. So, um, I, I'm working on a draft in a Google doc and we'll get that into a, a GitHub issue. Okay. Fantastic. So I think, um, I think that's a, that's a really good next step. Um, okay. Pratik. Yeah. Hi. Um, actually, I added the document in the wiki, but it skipped my mind that I had, that we had to move it into the docs repo. So I promise I'll send it today so that folks can review it better. Uh, for that, I also created a pull request implementing all that functionality. And I saw it last night that I need to rebase it. I'll do that today itself so that folks can provide feedback on that. In, in fairness, Pratik, the moving the wiki to the uh, to the repo is very, very recent. So you know, yes. you know, you, it's not like you weren't paying attention. It happened really recently. Okay. Yeah. So I'll do it now so that I'm in the flow. <laughs> and yeah, and I created a PR regarding this uh, sidecar admission. So feel free to provide some comments. And I added some very basic scripts just to automate the whole process so that people don't have to type a lot of commands. Now all those, those scripts are doing it, it's creating some SSL certificates, PLS certificates, and creating those as secrets in the Kubernetes, in the Kubernetes, using the Kubernetes APIs. And all this can be automated using an init container. So when somebody is trying to deploy, they can just deploy a YAML file and an init container comes up and does all this work for us. So that would be my next step. Once we, once I get some feedback about this approach and what we are doing, it because this is a little bit manual, and I would like it to be more automated, and so that nobody has to run those script to create those SSL and everything, and it gets done in the background. Cool. So definitely looking forward to the. Uh, to the pull request on uh, on that. Yeah, yeah. I will fix the pull request I already have, and I'll create a new pull request for automating all that stuff. Yeah, and uh, definitely uh, everyone who's worked on uh, on things towards this, like, thank you very much. You know, even if it's not checked in at the moment or anything like that, like, we're we're very grateful for the uh, for the work that's uh, been put in. Um, just backtracking a little bit, uh, recall uh, one of the uh, re-announcements. Uh, remember that there is a cloud native network function seminar at the Open Source Summit that's going to be on Tuesday, August 28th in the afternoon. Uh, so for those of you who are going to be in Vancouver during that time, um, uh, make make sure just to uh, make sure to sign up. Um, okay, so a couple. Uh, 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 review of development activity. So we had a few, um, uh, starting with issues closed, uh, we, the ones that were the most prominent to me were, uh, we had the shell check was, um, uh, has been added to our builds. So 
you can whenever if you add any shell scripts, uh, it'll automatically be a part of the build and and help find issues with portability or um, uh, or otherwise. And uh, the integration tests are now runnable from console uh, from both console and Travis. So uh, you should be able to to run the integration tests and see them work. Um, from the pull request, uh, we now have a pluggable architecture, and uh, Ed has done a tremendous amount of work towards uh, getting us to this to this point. Uh, so basically, we we want to have the project set up so that we can um, add and remove plugins based on the needs of uh, of whatever it is that is being that is being built. So this is an important step towards it. Uh, uh, you want to add something? Yeah, just to give a, one concrete example of why this is important. Um, you know, we're in the process of writing things like the network service manager. And by writing it with the plugin architecture, um, we can make it trivial for people to plug in replacement components for various things. Uh, the, the, the biggest example of that would be data plane, where basically if you have a different data plane you'd like to use with NSM, it really should just be as simple as write your data plane plugin and then, you know, take the NSM plugin and plug that in to replace plug that in as the data plane that you want to use, and then away you go. Yeah, and there's other uh, uh, other benefits as well, like even the configuration management is done as a, as a plugin. So if you want to swap out the configuration management for uh, for one that integrates uh, more closely with your um, with your operational environment, you know, it, this this makes it possible. So, so def definitely, um, and also it greatly in increases testing because you can mock out pretty much any any major component. Um, so we now have a uh, network service endpoint uh, example. Uh, and Sergey, do you, do you want to give a word on 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 that? Uh, yeah, sure. <clears throat> so uh, to be able to run end-to-end -end testing, basically we need three components, uh, NSM client, uh, NSM uh, as a server, and the NSC, which offer its uh, channel or whatever uh, service it um, uh, offers to the NSM. And uh, so we had NSM client and NSM, and uh, I just pushed um, <clears throat> uh, last bits for NSC. And what it does is, uh, so the way it works now, uh, initially when NSC comes up, same as NSM client, it uh, calls for NSM and basically gets the um, uh, socket for further communication. And then it starts, NSC starts the gRPC server, which is waiting for um, uh, con uh, connection requests. And when there is a client, which is NSM client, it needs to connect a specific network service to the specific channel, then uh, NSM client calls to the NSM, and then NSM on behalf of the client calls to the NSC to get the information required for programming of the data plane. So this chain is now working, and uh, basically the next step would be to add the data plane programming for all, uh, for these two NSM client and an NSC. Yeah, that's it. If you have questions. Okay. Um, let's see, we have Cobra and Viper uh, that we're adding into the system. So uh, these are Go uh, frameworks. Uh, Cobra is designed to uh, to integrate with command line, uh, basically to build out a command line set of parameters and pretty much a very large number of uh, major projects use, uh, use Cobra. So uh, Docker, I believe Kubernetes does. Uh, uh, um, etcd definitely does and we're also bringing in viper which is the uh, sister project of it which is designed to manage configurations and so viper allows you to store your configurations in a variety of ways uh, it could be on files such as json or uh, or yaml or uh, 
exported off to a uh, to some configuration management server like etcd or uh or i'm vault for secrets and so that's so that that should help us with uh, overall configuration execution and, and configuration of the of the system um it's also probably worth noticing noting there so viper is what backs the config plugin and um we're, we the log plugin is also backed by logris uh, and we're currently doing what I sort of call, and what I'm ca sort of calling logging by label, um, which is when you set up a logger, a log plug, a logger plugin, you sort of say, okay, these are the sets of labels I want all of my log messages to carry, and they they get added because logris logs in JSON. Um, and one of the nice things about that is when you then go to configure log levels, you configure log levels by a selector on those labels. Um, so that you have a great deal of flexibility about you know, tuning log levels up and down in a fairly local way. Yeah, that's why I add Logris onto the list of stuff that was added in as well. Yeah. Um, so we've already spoken about the make file. We've spoke about the documents move. Uh, we've had more, more code cleanup. And uh, this was also PRs merged in the last uh, two weeks as opposed to the last week since we did not meet last week, so. Um, okay, so on to some of the main, uh, main agenda items. Uh, we are working towards trying to become a Kubernetes work group member. Uh, Ed, um, I'll let you uh, speak on this. Yeah, so um, at the, not the last Signet Ricky meeting, but the one before, we went to Signet Ricky and said, look, hey, you know, it looks like there are these two mechanisms for us here. One would be to become a Signet Ricky subproject. The other would be to become a Kubernetes working group. And the opinion that came back from Signet Ricky was, we would really like to sponsor you as a working group rather than as a subproject, which I think is a perfectly good, good answer. Um, and so I, I opened the PR for that. We're going through the sort of the normal dance there where, um, you know, the folks from Signet Networking who are sponsoring us need to speak up. There's a little bit of confusion right now. Somebody closed the PR because they thought it should belong in Signet Networking proper. That's going to be a discussion between people like Tim Hawken and um, the, the sort of bigger picture of Kubernetes folks. Um, he is about to go on three weeks vacation. So this discussion will likely go on, uh, will likely have a bit of a pause and then continue. Um, but you know, it's all sort of the normal process for working groups coming into existence. Hey, Ed, uh, could, could you like describe those options a little better? I, I think I understand it, but it, it sounds pretty critical about in what sort of base assumptions are made about your project when you join uh, yeah. work, so, as a working group member. What yeah, are your so basically, or? Yeah, so being a, sig uh, being a SIG network subproject would basically mean that we would do the network service mesh, uh, you know, in the Kubernetes repo and as a subproject of uh, SIG networking. And, and SIG networking has said that they like two things about network service mesh very, very much. The first thing they like is that we're actually technically orthogonal to the standard Kubernetes networking. They think that is awesome. But the second thing they've said is they also recognize the possibility that we could be used to solve problems like multi-tenancy for Kubernetes networking. And so at this time, they don't really want us to strictly live under uh, SIG network in the Kubernetes repo. Um, they, they like the fact that we're working independently and orthogonally. Uh, it preserves those as of options best for them. And so for that sort of thing, a working group is a much better structure. Um, I, I think this is actually probably good for us. I think we can move much more quickly um, in an independent repo, not as a subproject right now, then we would be able to move uh, as a subproject of SIG network and more at a, a young growth state such that this um, is really the best fit for the project. Um, the, the, the point I've made repeatedly to SIG networking, and I think we, we sort of generally agree about that here, is we're really perfectly happy to go with whatever disposition SIG networking thinks is best over time. Um, and, you know, they will figure that out. So. Um, I, I think right now our, our key focus is delivering something that's valuable and, you know, we can you know, decide what future disposition of the code looks like as we get there. Yeah, that sounds good. I think 
at some point, though, probably, and maybe it's clear we're not ready for it yet, but we'll have to see where we fit in with people solving the multi or attempting to solve the multi tenancy problem and whether we can and how and what we're going to work. Oh, yeah, with. no, and, and we've had some of those discussions, and it turns out. Um, network service mesh, if you were to choose to apply it to the multi-tenancy problem, is an insanely clean solution to that problem. Um, it, it avoids a whole lot of problems that you might otherwise experience in trying to solve multi-tenancy. And that, that's one of the reasons that was expressed why they, they like us as a possibility for that. And as as uh, has this been proposed in the uh, SIG multi tenancy working group? Has it been discussed that uh, within that group that the uh, service mesh could be an option? No, and, and thank you. We should probably go talk to them about it. Uh, let me go try and get on their agenda um, and get some slides together and talk to them about that. The other thing I do want to be mindful of is, um, and this is something where I'd probably want Tim's guidance, so I may not do it terribly immediately, um, is that. I want to make sure that we present it in a way that is comfortable for the SIG networking group. Um, one of the reasons the SIG networking group loves us is that we're not trying to rewrite the whole world on them. Uh, and I, I'd like to continue to um, hold the, we are not here to change everything stance because they, they have been made uncomfortable by other folks who are wanting to change a ton of stuff. Makes sense. Yeah, no, it's, it's the, the, the what I would sort of call the healthy politics of of you know keeping humans comfortable and and quite frankly I, I think before they're going to have any strong opinions uh, they're going to want to see us deliver something. Yeah, I think um, short term the plan's pretty straightforward and it, the, the plans the short term plan's pretty much the same regardless as to where we end up uh, as a project uh, from a from an organizational perspective, which is just get the product out there, get it uh, in people's hands, find use cases, make sure that we map to them. Uh, you know, so it's really, this is really about the long term. You know, where where do we sit? How do we interact with other with other groups? What what uh, what credibility do we have besides we have something working? You know, like how do we interoperate with other with other groups? So I think I, I, I think this is not as important for the short term, but incredibly important for for long term. Um, so I've added an action item to uh, for the multi tenancy group. Um, and it doesn't I, I, it doesn't need to be this particular week. We, we can work even just working out when the right time to talk with them and keeping that on the uh, on the back burner would be would be enough for that. So um, so I've added that on. Um, is is there any other questions on this particular topic, or should we move on? Okay, so the next thing uh, was the continuous integration. And uh, I added this agenda item before. Uh, I had a little bit more uh, to add to this. So I'll add, um, I'm going to add a link real quick. But basically, uh, one of the things that we realized was that uh, we're going to have limited, uh, uh, eventually we're going to be limited by, by Travis in terms of the type of testing that we can that we can do. And so in order to support multi node uh, testing, um, I reached out to the um, to the CNCF uh, cluster organization. And I also had a talk with some of the people who are running the cluster uh, packet. And uh, it looks like we're getting strong support from both CNCF and the people who run the cluster at uh, at packet. So uh, so we're waiting for final responses on what's going to happen with the cluster, with gain access, uh, gaining access to the cluster. But long story short, CNCF has a testing cluster for 
for various types of testing and continuous integration. And uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, we want to have either Travis farm out continuous integration tests that are multi-node onto these systems, or uh, if that if that doesn't work out well because of uh, limitations in the CI system or time, then at the very minimum have some form of a of a daily of, of a daily build that uh, verifies the that we haven't broken the the world in a fundamental way. So, uh, and in the long run, we 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 should also it appears that we'll also get uh, access to some interesting hardware as well so we should gain access to dpdk enabled nic cards and there's also the possibility of gaining access to uh to hardware that is capable of speaking more esoteric uh protocols so uh not a guarantee at this particular point for those for those items and at the very minimum at, right now we're starting small so uh, that's that's where we're at, we're at with that. Um, and one of the things that I'm also going to do is I have a Kubernetes install installer for Ansible. Uh, it works on both CentOS and uh, Ubuntu systems. And I wrote this for the Linux Foundation for their IT uh, group uh, because we needed it in open daylight. And uh, it turns out that CNCF uh, CI group, it appears that they don't have something that's equivalent to this. So I'm going to pitch this to that particular group. Uh, I know there's a couple people from that group who are here, so it's a bit of a preview on on something that we're going to do on that. But basically what we can do is we could potentially, we could potentially use uh, this to install uh, nodes onto that cluster if uh, if there's no uh, current way to, to do that from, from a CNCFCI uh, tool that already exists. And if one doesn't exist, then we'll see, a, we'll work out a way to uh, to integrate and potentially donate some of this to uh, to the CNCFCI group. Uh, uh, what was that? Oh, go ahead. I just, I had a comment. I'll wait a minute until you're done with that. Cool. Um, but at the very minimum. I'm going to close my off. Uh, at the very minimum, we're going to, um, in order to get the cluster running, we're going to need the Docker images, and we're going to have to make sure that we have daemon sets ready to go and uh, and running. And we, I believe, we 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 have a daemon set already set up, uh, but we'll we'll have to make sure that uh, that is that it's review it, ensure that it's set up properly, and then work out how to spin up and 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 run those uh, from from Travis. And then the last step after that is just to continue building out more integration tests. And anytime that we have some form of a demo that we that we run, we also want to make sure that those end up in the integration tests as well. So that way that our demo paths are very well tested in our in our hardened. So, so, so quick quick question on that. Um, does Cloud CI have stuff for installing Kubernetes on, on packet already that we might be able to leverage? I believe that they do, and that's that's part of yeah. Sorry. Hi, this is Taylor. Um, we, the cross cloud provisioner portion of the cross cloud CI project does provisioning of packet. Uh, it can provision Kubernetes clusters on packet. I think yeah, I the issue with this would be use case. Does it fit what NSM is needing? Um, I definitely like the idea of um, the Ansible roles being available to Linux Foundation, the IT group as a whole. I think that's going to be really useful. Um, and then as far as what's most useful for NSM, if, if this works out, that's great. And definitely we can take a look if desired at the cross cloud stuff. We talked about that before and uh, I didn't know where that where things were as far as the automated testing. Yeah, I I believe, yeah, that that's my my understanding. So cross cloud has something to install on packet. Um, the Ansible mm -hmm. role was designed for uh, originally for spinning running on a set of uh, of VMs or 
experimental hardware that um, that already exists, and so uh, a cloud provider was was not present in that in that scenario. But uh, yeah, if if it turns out we can just use the cloud CI Kubernetes provisioner to spawn and kick these things off, um, or we can make a commit to to help in that path. Like I think that would be um, that would be really helpful. So I think there's a there's the CubeSpray project, which is already using Ansible playbook to deploy Kubernetes. Could it be augmented? Am I... Yeah, well, I, had, I? I, tr I tried CubeSpray earlier, and I had some I had some trouble with it. I forget what it, the trouble was, but that, yeah, that's another thing that we can look at as well. Uh, see if it works in, in this environment. So also look at that. Yeah, there, there's really a large number of tools out there, so it's hard to say um, this is the one to use without really looking at the use case and deciding. Um, the the cr cross-cloud CI has a lot of components, and if, if you go there or you look at the dashboard at CNCF CI, there's a lot of different parts. It doesn't mean that all of those are necessary. Uh, the, the part that's probably most relevant for this would be just the cross-cloud, the multi-cloud provisioner portion. I'll drop a link in, in there. And it supports, uh, well, all the clouds that are currently active on the production, which AWS, Azure, GCE. IBM Cloud is actually uh, the container service, so it, it does support, like, using different container services. And then packets, an example of bare metal. So it's allocating the, the hardware resources from packet using the API and then uh, provisioning Kubernetes on this. And then OpenStack, we just added vSphere recently. It could target other things, VMs and, or your own hardware as well, because we've done like Pixie Boot and stuff. But again, there's a lot of choices. I mean, Digital Rebar and Crib, they do bare metal. Um, so I, th I think what would be good is to look at how um, the testing should happen. We were saying earlier, running it daily and looking at the builds, but looking at what we want as far as output. Yeah, I think that's good advice. So uh, what I'm hearing the next step that we have to do then is uh, is really nail down the um, the use cases before we can before we can really work out what tool to bring in. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, um, and the last. Um, Let's see, the last major item on the uh, agenda is the uh, what we're doing with the documentation. So last time we met, uh, we ran into a couple issues with how do you review things, how do you tell what's changed within the, doc within the documentation, and uh, GitHub, despite the fact that it stores everything in a Git repo and the wiki, uh, does not extend the GitHub repo tools to that to that wiki. So uh, we moved over to the um, to the main to the main repo. So basically, everything's been moved from wiki to slash docs d o c s. And so, if you would like to add anything to the uh, to the documentation, uh, please add it in there. And the current plan at this point is to number one, build out more documentation, remove stale documentation, clean up. Uh, the second the second step is we want to uh, set up Hugo to generate a, um, a site. And once we have Hugo generating a site, then uh, we're looking at a tool called Netlify, which can, which is capable of um, of triggering on a on a uh, commit 
uh, rebuilding the site and then uh, and setting out setting it up with hosting and then pointing network service mesh.io towards it and so so ideally what we'll be able to do then is we'll be able to uh, add additional documentation to the to the site through through this mechanism and have everything show up uh, nicely laid out uh, on the um, on the main uh, on the main page so so the bottom line is is if all the docs are in if all the docs are in the docs directory then we can review them and modify them and update them and then generate a site based on and basically have uh, the ability to update the site yeah it's great sounds exactly. great exactly and so once uh, once a commit is accepted and has been merged in, then that should trigger and automatically update the uh, the web page. Yeah. So uh, so I thought that it's a little bit more work than the wiki, uh, but I think the end result is um, is much nicer, and it also promotes uh, also promotes code review on our documentation, and we can look at documents as as code is as well so um, um there's one last thing that we need to add in i forgot to add it onto this uh eventually we're going to also have to generate uh, uh go doc and push that into the documents directory as well and so uh we'll, we'll have to work out a way to uh, Add that into the build system to make sure that GoDoc is generated when you when you run the uh, the build, and make sure that uh, we add in the the appropriate checks within. Uh, you know, we'll work out if we can get Netlify to run GoDoc directly, which would be ideal. But if it if it can't or won't, uh, then we'll we'll see about getting um, setting it up within the build system itself. Yeah, I, I think it can, but I haven't actually verified that yet. So. Um... Yeah, we can, we can definitely figure that out. And um, there's a couple comments that Holger added on as well um, that, we, that I missed from earlier. Um, uh, Holger, we'll take a look at Spinnaker uh, as well. Um, so thanks for the suggestion. Um, so anyways, that's, that's it for the main agenda. Is, is there, we have a few minutes left. Is there anyone, any other topics that people would like to, to bring up uh, yes. or any questions? Okay. Yes. Go for it. Very quickly. Uh, I, I am chair of the um, NFE SIG and CentOS. So I always have a back agenda of looking at what and asking people what, what packages we need in NFE um, in the CentOS distro. And just keep that in mind. And if anybody wants to sponsor this or some combination of packages we're talking about as, met, as being in the NFE SIG and available on the, Cent, on the CentOS distro, we have, a, we have a process for that. So um, please uh, contact me or, uh, or look on, uh, on the dev uh, mailing list on CentOS and uh, look at CentOS.org and you'll see pointers there to the NFE SIG and other useful thank, thank things. You. That's actually excellent. Um, I, I appreciate you raising that. Yeah, and um, even if the network service mesh itself doesn't end up in it, we should start thinking about our dependencies and working out uh, what what should la what should land in there. So, like, uh, well, I'll, I'll give a, a simple example. Like, uh, if VPP is a is a dependency, uh, having a VPP package would be useful to. to That's already there. VPP is already there, but so, we don't. Yeah. Yeah. So, any other packages people can think of that we that we need well, um, to to do it, like. Yeah. But the, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a good point, though. Very, very good point. Anything you can think of or want to sponsor or anybody wants to sponsor a package, it's a, it is some, not a zero amount of work, just uh, pushing the package through the system and so on and so forth and building and so on, all the, all the sort of mechanics of it is uh, it would be quite helpful to have people from this uh, community involved in the, 
um, NFE SIG for CentOS. Great, thank you for the um, thank you for the invite. So I'll definitely jump in and take a look and see what you uh, what you already have as well. Yes. Okay. Are there any other uh, topics or announcements? Okay. Well, thank you everyone for for attending and. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for uh, for next Friday. So uh, start thinking of agenda items uh, throughout the week and feel free to start adding them earlier on. So um, I like to try to get agenda items in uh, a bit uh, a bit earlier if we can, but we'll always have the agenda bashing at the start as well. So even if you forget or something comes up at the last minute, like don't don't sweat it. Like we, we can still we can still get it in. Uh, but if if you add in the agenda items beforehand, it helps a little bit more with with planning and trying to work out the scope of, of what we can handle in the meeting. So uh, so again, thank you everyone, and we'll see you all next week. Bye. 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 There was a question Daniel raised on the chat. Is anybody here going to be at the IETF? Where is that? Where is that going to be held at? Uh, Montreal. Montreal. And, and I'll be there. Yeah. Al. Okay. You know, oh. uh, do they ever hold any meetings at their headquarters, which, which is based in Fremont? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd ask. I've, never... <laughs> I, I've, I've been attending since 1998. I've never been there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I thought I'd ask. <laughs> Must be Al Martin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Cool. Perfect. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.